Hello everybody, this is Hammer Striker here. Today I've got a couple of interesting, uh, inexpensive concealed carry pistols on the table. I've got the updated or revised Diamondback AM2 that Diamondback sent to us for review. And they've literally let us hold on to it to do various different comparisons with a number of different guns. And today we chose to compare it to the Taurus PT-111G2, the Millennium. And this is actually a fairly nice gun, the, the Taurus, and it's actually quite popular, even though now they've come out with the G2 series, you know, their naming is kind of messy, and they've completely purged this gun's existence from the website. So the, the updated version of the Taurus, it's almost like this one never existed. But they're still out there, they're in gun stores, there's quite a few of them out there. So overall, these both target the concealed carry market, and both of them are in the 300-ish territory for MSRP. The Diamondback is MSRP is 339, and the Taurus is MSRP is 319. You probably are going to get the Taurus is significantly less expensive now that the new generation is out there. People will be you know, selling off the older stock, but there's quite a few of them out there. Dimensionally, they're both similar. The Diamondback is 6.49 length front to back. The Taurus is 6.24 front to back. The Diamondback is shorter with the flush mag which holds 12 rounds is 4.6 inches and the Taurus is 5.1 inches with the only factory mag that's available. The Diamondback does come with a factory 17 round magazine and if you have the older magazines from the older generation AM2 that held 10 and 15 they will work. The factory mags are now 17, you know, there's the grip sleeves hiding the, the bottom of this mag, and 12. The Taurus only is available with factory mag of 12, but there are pro mags available, and this one's got an X grip on it that will give you a little bit more capacity and take it up to 17. So capacity can be similar, even though I'm much happier with factory mag support. You know, When you start getting into third-party mags, you can get into reliability issues. So the AM2 having the factory mag available with a, a well-integrated grip sleeve is, is definitely a plus on the side of the AM2. So enough talking about them sitting on the table. Let's pick these things up and get a little bit closer to them. They are, of course, unloaded Diamondback. And we have an unloaded Taurus. Both of them have bright mag followers. The Taurus has a yellow follower. The Diamondback has an orange follower. The bright follower thing seems to be kind of really catching on and taking over market-wide. Everybody's doing different colored brighter followers. From a ergonomic standpoint, the Diamondback has really nice grip, really nice stippling. It's kind of the sandpapery texture, but it's not abrasive or aggressive. It's very comfortable to hold, very easy to hold. And it does have front and rear serrations. A really nice black nitride finish over stainless steel. So the barrel, which is a 3.5 inch barrel, and the slide are stainless steel with the black nitride coating, which is a really, it's a smooth, shiny coating, and it really repels dirt well. But it's easy to get a hold of. There's no problem getting a hold of it anywhere, even in the areas that, that don't have the serrations. It's an easy to operate gun, and it has a three slot Picatinny rail. The Taurus is stainless steel as well. It's got a single slot Picatinny rail, and it's got little patches of the sandpapery texture. It's still easy to hold, but the grip on the AM2 is just a little bit nicer, a little bit, well, you know, kind of more refined grip and a little more comfortable. But the Taurus's grip is actually quite functional. The Taurus doesn't have front serrations. It's got a little sculpting here, and it does have rear serrations, which makes it a little bit easier to, uh, to go from the back. But from the front, you kind of have to dig into this little groove to do it. You can do it, but it's just a little bit more work to get a hold of it. So let's go ahead and put the, uh, the flush mags in. So with the Taurus of the flush mag, it's a full three-finger grip. It does have a pinky extender. So you get a full three-finger grip on it. And it is comfortable to hold. With the Diamondback, with the flush mag, you still get three fingers on it, but the one bottom one kind of hangs off just a hair. But that base plate's a little bit thicker, and it does blend well into the grip. And there's never an issue with pinching or any of that. The Taurus did pinch me once or twice. Not big time, but just enough to kind of nip my finger. The, the uh, Diamondback has never done that. 
And one thing I can comment on this Diamondback, when Diamondback approached us to see if we wanted to borrow these guns from them and do reviews, I went out and looked at the specs on it, and I was actually really excited to get a hold of it. It was, it was a gun I was really awaiting getting a hold of. So when our friends over at Guns Galore called us and said it was ready, I, I kind of rushed right over there. And of course, at that point, you do risk being disappointed. You kind of get your hopes up. That's not the case. This AM2 has not disappointed. It's actually exceeded our expectations. You were able to pull really tight groups with it. It's very comfortable to shoot. It's been completely reliable. It's actually a really nice gun to live with. The Taurus has been reliable as well, but the AM2 just kind of takes it a step above in everything that it does. I pulled a little tighter groups with the AM2. We'll talk about the trigger in a bit. I found the trigger, at least for my personal taste, is a little bit better on the AM2. The kind of everything it does, it just does just a little bit better. As far as sights go, the AM2 comes with these factory three dot sights. They're real easy to see, they're real bright and real clear. But the really cool thing about it is their Glock pattern, which means if you don't like them, you can put any sight that would fit a Glock on these. And that is a big deal, because every manufacturer that makes sights makes sights for a Glock. So as you can see, it's got a rear dovetail just like a Glock, and this one has also a set screw to retain it. And then the front sight has the screw that comes up underneath it, which is the standard Glock pattern. So any Glock sights will fit this. I don't, wouldn't necessarily be in change to, uh, inclined to change them unless you were wanting to go with the tritium because these are really cool, bright, easy to see sights. These are not the factory Taurus sights. The front sight has been changed out with a tritium sight. But the Tauruses are also dovetailed and replaceable. But it's, you know, you have to get sights that fit this gun, which kind of narrows down the options a little bit. You can see the, uh, the TFO style sights on the front with the, the fiber optic and the tritium. You, so with either one, you're going to get the sights you want. From a safety perspective, both of them have the integral drop safeties. Both of them have the Glock style split trigger. This one also has a thumb safety, and I'm not particularly a fan of thumb safeties. And when you look at all of the other internal safeties that are available, it's kind of an unnecessary add-on, just one more thing to mess up. But there are those people that definitely like thumb safeties, and if, if that's the territory you're in, then the Taurus will cover you. But the AM2, just like the Glock, has all the same safeties that you would need to be able to carry it safely. Both of these are drop safe weapons, carry them, and, and of course use the holster to cover the trigger. One other feature that's on the AM2 is this little bit of a serration at the front of the trigger guard. So if you're one of the people that likes to put your finger up there, there's kind of a place to put it and retain it, and you can use the serrations to find your spot, figure out where it is that you want to have your finger. Both of these guns have been proven reliable and they're, they're easy to work with and easy to live with. So you really won't make a bad choice with either one of them. Let me show you some size comparisons. So I'm going to take with the flush mag, you'll see that the Taurus, mainly because of the pinky extender, is a little bit taller. And I'll turn them a little bit so you can also you know, get the, the height difference. The Taurus is also significantly thicker and you can see that with it. You know, you turn them side by side, you can see that the Taurus is significantly thicker. And of course, I got the diamond back on this side and the Taurus on this side. So let me go ahead and set a muzzle down, which kind of gives you a little bit of idea of, of the beaver tail versus the... Turn them that way, it's a little bit easier to see. So you can see that the diamond back does have a beaver tail that sticks out a little further, which of course will protect you from the slide bite. And the slides are similar in overall, overall size. So... From a concealed carry perspective, you're really going to have either one of them is going to work. They're, the differences in size aren't significant enough to drive the decision one way or another for concealed carry. Of course, when you put the extended mag in the diamond back, pick up the correct gun, put the extended mag in, it becomes longer. It's now 5.6 inches. You've got a full three-fingered grip, and now you've got 17 rounds of, of reliable capacity because it's a factory mag. That's an option. So you can carry the flush mag in the holster, and then you can carry this as your backup mag, or if it's a range day, you want to go out and have some fun, you can you, you have a little bit more capacity. So you got the versatility, and you notice it's even got the serrations, or actually the, the texture, and it blends in smoothly. And as I mentioned, this gun has never pinched me. Even though one of my fingers, the, the meaty part of the finger is right on that, that break point, 
it didn't get me at all. So it gives you a little bit more capacity to work with. So the factory specs for both of these guns say that they're 22 ounces. Let's find out what they really are. So I'm going to put the gun without the magazine. This is the Diamondback. And we've got 18.8. .8. And if I set the flush mount magazine on it, it's 21.2. So it comes in a little bit under the factory designated weight. And if I put the extra mag on there, it comes up to 22.3. And I noticed after the fact that I hadn't let the scale settle. It actually came in at 18.7 without a magazine in it. I had read it just as it flicked. So now let's go ahead and do the Taurus. If I put the Taurus on without a magazine, it comes in at 18.7. I'll let the scale settle. Put a magazine on it, it comes in at 21.6. So they're very similar. Again, any difference in weight is going to be point something, and it's really not going to be a significant difference. So go ahead and take those off. The next thing we'll do is we'll actually go ahead and take each one of these apart so you can see the internal components of them. So let's clear these magazines out of the way here so that we can take these two guns apart. And we'll start with the Taurus. And of course you always verify that you've got an unloaded gun. You do pull the trigger. And just like a Glock, you just kind of grab it and squeeze a little bit, pull down on these two tabs and they slide apart. The Taurus seems to be a little sticky sometimes, not wanting to come apart. So I'll set the Taurus down. AM2 is the same thing. Pull the trigger, grab it like you would a Glock. AM2 comes apart very smoothly. Now, just because we've got the scale out, we might as well weigh the components just for entertainment value. So I'm gonna take the, the uh, Taurus slide, put it on the scale fully assembled. Give it a second to settle, it comes in at 13 ounces. Do the Diamondback slide. 12 point, no, 13 if I give it a chance to settle. So what we're finding is that even at the component level, put the Taurus frame, 5.9, and the Diamondback frame, 5.9. So even at the component level, these guns are very similar in weight. And that's one of the things we did find is that even the recoil characteristics of the guns and how the slides operated, recoil felt very similar on these guns. So I'm going to set the AM2 aside for a second, bring the Taurus into the frame, and show you the internals. Now the Taurus, this particular version, is, the, is exposed stainless. It's polished stainless. They also do have a, a black version of the Taurus. And it's a nice looking gun. It does give you some aesthetics. The stainless, you know, the, the showing, the shiny stainless, really kind of does kind of dress it up a little bit. And a Diamondback currently doesn't offer a version like that, but who knows what they may do in the future. The Taurus has a Glock style captive recoil spring and if I pull the barrel out, the barrel has a semi-polished feed ramp. You can see the machining marks on it, you can see a little bit of, of grooves there. It's not mirror polished, but it is actually quite smooth. And if I put my uh, light tube in it, let you take a look down into the barrel, it is conventional rifling and it's well machined. It is, you know, it is a well-made, well-machined gun, especially at the price point that it's at. And when you look at the slide, there is a few machining marks in here, but it's overall well done. I'm going to go ahead and put this slide back together, and we'll talk about the frame, and then we'll move on to the Diamondback. So set that slide aside. The frame, your typical striker fire control group, there's really not a whole lot going on in there. Nice robust locking blocks at the front, or not locking blocks, uh, slide guides. And then a little bit smaller guides, they're steel at the back. Again, there's really not a whole lot in here. It's a little more complicated than a Glock, but it is per a fairly typical fire control group for a striker fired gun. Putting it back together is as simple as just lining it up. Now this one I have found to be a little twitchy sometimes trying to get it to line up. Sometimes it's the spring, but I found that Taurus sometimes you gotta play with a little bit to get it to go back together. And then we'll bring the AM2 into the screen. We'll do the frame first because I happen to have it out. Now in this case, it's not they're not coated, so they stand out a little bit more, but you see there's very robust guides at the front and rear, just like the Diamondback, or just like the Taurus, and a slightly less complicated fire control group 
and of course you do have the little protrusion for the drop safety. The Taurus had the same thing as well. So again, both of them have the striker block drop safety pistons. Right there's the protrusion. But overall, everything in here is a clean, well machined, well done. We'll go to the slide. It does have a captive recoil spring. It's a single spring on the diamond back. One thing I'll note too, I've got it. This little hole here is for a cock striker indicator. So the Diamondback does have a cock striker indicator that you can look at or you can feel it with your finger. You look at the barrel on the Diamondback, it's also quite well done. And it does have a very highly polished feed ramp. Go ahead and put the light tube in it. You'll see it's also conventional rifling. That highly polished feed ramp is nice. This should feed just about anything. Now we've had no troubles with either one of the guns feeding. This one just has a little bit more polish and finish done on the feed ramp. And when I look at the slide, it's very well machined, very smooth. There's nothing extra or fancy in there, but everything is just well done and, and smoothly executed. Overall, it's a very good manufacturing quality. So we'll go ahead and put this one back together, which is actually quite easy to do. Grab the frame. There we go. And it's back together and operational. Now I talked about the triggers a little bit earlier, so I'm going to go ahead and demonstrate the triggers next. Go ahead and grab the two guns. We'll start with the Taurus. There's a lot of take up. It's light, but there's a lot of take up. And then it has a fairly soft brake. Both of them come in around the five to six pound territory, but it breaks way at the back. And Taurus does have double strike capability, so in that case you could just pull the trigger. Reset on it is actually pretty good. It's, it's a decently short reset, a little bit of take up to get back on the wall, and then again a break at the back. I did find that trigger to be a little more vague, and I think it's because of the break all the way at the back. The Diamondback has less take up, and you'll see you're not all the way at the back. And then it has a crisp wall, and then a really crisp break. What I've noticed is is more similar to a Glock. Now, some people like the softer triggers. I know Hammer kind of likes the trigger on the, the Taurus a little bit better because he likes a little bit of a softer break. I found with the AM2, the crisp break and to be able to know exactly where that trigger is going to break was a definite advantage. That part of what helped me pull nicer, tighter groups of the AM2. And then the reset is similar to the Taurus, except that you're right on the wall. There's no take up. You're right on the wall. And then the break again, a real crisp, clean break. Now the AM2 does not have double strike capability. One minor difference, and what I've found in most cases that you know you're going to you're going to rack the fending round out anyway. So Glocks and most of the other guns on the market have moved away from the double strike capability. But that is one little advantage that the Taurus has between the two. So you know if you if double strike is an important thing to you, then you know the the Millennium would be one of the options. The AM2 and the Glocks and all the other you know, companies that have just never never done that. They, they moved to, the whole market has moved away from that. You know, be the AM2, Glock, and many of the others. Overall, if I had to pick one of the two, I would actually pick the AM2. I found it a little more comfortable to shoot, a little easier to pull tight groups with. Uh, everybody that we've let shoot this gun has thoroughly enjoyed it. Not that the Taurus is by any stretch of the imagination a bad gun. The AM2 just kind of steps ahead of it. It doesn't matter which one you pick, you're going to make a good choice. And of course now with the Taurus, this is a discontinued model. You probably can get it at a significantly lower price as the closeouts happen. The newer version of it, which is basically just an updated, rebadged version of this, is now taking over the market on the Taurus side of the world. And these should be starting to be fairly well available as by the time you see this video, where you can get the updated AM2, which brings uh, quite a few improvements to it. We've, we'll put a link to our full review of the AM2 as well as the Taurus, but in our full review of the AM2, we talk in much more detail about what they've updated on the, on the AM2. So if you previously had an AM2 and didn't like it, take a look at it again. They've probably the thing that you didn't like, they've probably dealt with. But beyond that, if you like our videos, please give us a thumbs up, share, subscribe, check us out on Facebook and Patreon, and have a great day. Thank you.